Good evening, everybody, and thank you for being here even at this late hour. I would like to welcome you to this joint press conference on the upcoming Eurogroup and the Greek debt crisis. Uh, today on the panel, we have uh, Gavi Zimmer, president of the GUE NGL group. We have Ska Keller, co-president of the Greens EFA group, and Gianni Pitella, president of the S&D group. I hand over first to Gavi Zimmer, then to Ska Keller, and then to Gianni Pitella. And then, of course, if there are questions from your side, uh, we take them afterwards. Merci. Thank you very much. I'll be speaking German. It's good to see you here, and I'm pleased to say that the Greens, the SND, and the GUI NGL as groups have managed to unite and agree on a position with a view to the up-and-coming Eurogroup Working Group meeting and that we can have a joint statement on that uh, across our three groups. We would like to take this opportunity to call on all participants to conclude the second scrutiny of the Greek program and to take the necessary decisions uh, so that the uh, mid-term measures which are necessary can be taken. The main uh, ob objective uh, or the main point for the three groups in the joint statement is uh, that they keep to their promises made in June 2015 uh, and that they finally implement and this not for uh, and that this not be counted for political reasons or because there are elections in certain countries. The roadmap now needs to be implemented. You can't expect one country to take measures which almost lead uh, to a collapse of their economy, their social system uh, and their society and then on the other hand not to carry out everything that you've announced. It's pretty arrogant to require those efforts from one country and then not to follow through on promises that have been made. And now finally, we have an opportunity to reach an agreement and we badly need such an agreement. And Greece now has uh, an opportunity uh, to stabilize matters and to pursue that course and we need to make sure that we can finally put a stop to the austerity policy. And let me just state clearly on behalf of my group that uh, we're very critical of the measures that uh, Greece has had uh, to meet because we think that the social situation is deteriorating in Greece. Of course, within my own group, we do see things differently, but let me just stress that many of the measures which over the past few years have been introduced because of the pressure from the Troika and the institutions that have negotiated it, have led to a situation where many uh, people in Greece uh, are uh, on the breadline and where you now find Greek society split and divided. And if we have a union of member states which are all on equal footing, I think that uh, it's not fair to put a left alternative under pressure in the way uh, that has happened. And the only explanation I can give to this is that they're doing this, they're putting pressure on this to make it clear that a leftist government uh, is doomed to fail. And that's something we can't except it's not something which is in keeping with the values of the European Union and it's also not in keeping with recognizing the democratic outcome of elections and we now need to stop the uh, Dieselbloom uh, approach and it's about time that uh, Berlin uh, and other donors 
now keep to their promises and overcome any further obstacles. We can't accept any further delays. We need stability in Greece and we need to make sure that the economy in Greece can be developed. The people of Greece have made great sacrifices and any delay will cause further suffering and damage. And of course, we also call in particular on the German finance minister and the German government to make sure that we can now have an agreement and that they stop playing political games. On the 22nd of May, hopefully uh, there was a, a positive trend that was started. Hopefully that can be continued so that now for the Eurozone and for Greece, very important and clear messages can be sent out. Hopefully that will then allow Greece access to the quantitative easing program and give them access to markets. That would be an important step in our view. And for the first time since uh, the crisis started, that would give Greece some real tangible prospects. That's why we're here and that's why I'll now pass on the floor to my colleagues. Thank you. Thanks everyone for being here. Um, and uh, the Greens IFA group is very happy to join uh, this common uh, initiative because we think indeed it's very, very high time that uh, we get serious about the debt relief for Greece. Uh, the Eurogroup had already promised in 2016 that there will be um, debt relief. That was, so to say, the Eurogroup part of the deal. Now, while everyone is always looking that Greece is fulfilling its part of the deal and does more and more cuts, no one is looking at actually the other side of the deal, namely that the Eurogroup had actually already decided, well, promised that there shall be debt relief. And now when this comes on the table, then we're a bit shocked to see that everybody goes like, nah, and I won't be, we're not sure, and maybe other things. So this really, like, a deal has to be kept. A deal has to be honoured, and that means that also the debt relief part of the deal has to be promised. And we can really see that there is a broad consensus and that this debt relief is really necessary for Greece. You can see it, you know, ranging from left progressive economists until the IMF. The IMF, which is usually not our best friend, um, certainly um, agrees with the fact that you need to get the debt relief in order also to get your economy uh, more competitive, the economy more moving, because we should never re forget that, yes, reforms are absolutely necessary. They're important. They're important in Greece. You know, it's important to continue to work on a just tax system that taxes the, the richest, for example, avoids, well, ends tax avoidance, um, one that leads to an um, economy uh, that is on a sustainable path of recovery and also one that breaks up um, oligopolies. So I think there's a lot to do in Greece, absolutely, but a lot of reforms also lead, need investments. It's very difficult to start reforms when you're actually, you know, at the same time having to cut um, money um, because some reforms need investments. They, for example, when you think of getting an education system into shape. But even if we look at Germany, then social reforms uh, that we might disagree with, but still social reforms were done at the same time with investment because it does need investments, both for the social system as well for getting your econo uh, economy on a sustainable path. So if all, all like if our aim together is to put uh, Greece's economy on a sustainable path, to get it up and running again, to get people into jobs so that also the Greek state has less um, expenditures to do, for example, uh, to support uh, unemployed people, then for that you need investments, but investments that will obviously pay off uh, later on if you do them smartly. And we're very shocked to see that, um, that this debt relief is uh, being taken hostage by a uh, well, few countries. And to put the finger on it, we see that uh, the role of Germany is very, very harmful in that, and especially of the finance minister. But we think it's also time that we look at the chancellor there as well. I mean, you, she can't hide behind the finance minister. And we have seen the elections in France. There's a big hope, you know, for saying we have a different Europe now. We do some reforms in Europe as well, and we go away from this paradigm of austerity which is not, you know, saving in a smart way because, indeed, we have to watch out that we're having balanced budgets. Absolutely, we need sol uh, solidity, but we also need solidarity. 
We also need to make sure that the economy is viable also in the future. So um, we absolutely call out for the German government to change their point of view, to not take Greece hostage for the national elections. This is not a topic for the election campaign. This is something that needs to be resolved now. Um, and um, everything else is, is really just up to national German politics, and I hope that this will not stop the progress of the European Union overall, because this is an issue that touches all of us and not just the people in Greece. Thank you, Scar Keller. Gianni Pitella. Grazie. Yes, thank you. Well, much has been said uh, quite well uh, by Gabby and by Scar. I just would like to uh, stress our agreement on, from a political point of view on this issue and add that there no longer are excuses here. I mean, in, in May we had the Eurogroup coming together, and this really should be the end of the second review of uh, the financing arrangements. You can't just hold the Greek uh, population uh, really uh, in limbo here because pretty much it's uh, – going to be uh, something that's got to be resolved. And, of course, the question of stability. Well, you uh, get that by uh, looking at the, the ways that you can identify the obstacles and see the types of things that are actually undermining the Greek uh, economy and harming citizens. Now, I also said before, uh, uh, and uh, to say what Scott and Gabby had said, well, trouble, that's enough, really, you know, enough is enough. I mean, don't take Greece and its citizens hostage for the purposes of in domestic politics. I mean, you're going to have your campaign. It will be conducted in Germany. It involves German issues. It shouldn't be uh, one that uses Greek uh, issues. The Greek uh, government, yes, it has to undertake uh, uh, reforms. It has to improve public administration. It has to uh, fight uh, corruption. It has to uh, – but on the other hand, the creditors also should uh, also – uh, find a way to respect uh, the terms of the pact. And, and uh, at this point in time, they've uh, got to come to the table and actually uh, negotiate debt relief. And uh, they've got to make it possible for Greece, as was said by others, uh, by my colleagues, to uh, have access to quantitative easing measures. For too long, uh, we've been playing with fire. And uh, then on the 2nd of March, well, we, uh, we hoped at this point in time that we're going to turn the page. And this press conference shows that the progressive uh, uh, factions in uh, Europe are on the march on this issue. Yes, thank you, Johnny Bitella. From your side. It was all clear? Crystal clear? Okay. Then thank you very much and have a good evening.